When I think about what's unique about it is that it's a consistent, long-term effort focused on the scientific goal, which is cell types and the computations that neurons perform. We talk a lot at the Institute about things like molecular signatures, gene expression, that's the history of the Allen Institute. But now we're entering into this new era where we have functional living tissue and we have this ability to do the electrical measurements and actually gain another modality in addition to gene expression, now looking at the uh, electrical signatures. The way I like to think about it is, we're the people that if you found a computer sitting on a, on a beach somewhere, my group is the one that is basically going to take that computer and we're going to pull it apart and we're going to look at every tiny transistor and resistor and try to build that computer back together from its component parts. Patch clamp electrophysiology is simply the measurement of the voltages or currents in a neuron. You know, neurons use electrical signals to communicate, and by measuring the voltages and currents, you can see how they're communicating. What we do in patch clamp electrophysiology is we take thin slices of brain tissue, either from a mouse or a human. Basically, we dissect the, the mouse brain or we get a piece of surgical tissue from a human surgery and we slice it into very, very thin sections. And what the slices allow us to do is normally neurons that would be really, really deep within the mouse or human brain, by slicing it and putting it on its side, we can get access, electrical access, to those neurons. Patch clamp electrophysiology is making use of this specialized type of glass that allows us to form a seal on the cell and then open a direct connection where the fluid has access to come from the cell into the pipette and the pipette into the cell. So we can both record signals and then we can deliver signals through this glass electrode. What's new about it is that it's not post-mortem. You know, the, the neurons are essentially alive. We're seeing electrical signals in real time and you know we can essentially ask the neurons by performing different protocols we can sort of ask the neurons different questions and see how they answer. We have very parallel programs here in our Allen Institute cell types program. One aspect of that that's dealing with mouse visual cortical brain region and the other new program that we're developing looking at human neurosurgical specimens that come from patients that have either intractable epilepsy or need to have tumors removed. And although there are a lot of similarities in how we approach our experiments and how we handle the tissue, there are definitely some very unique things about working with the human tissue, some of which was very surprising and uh, some of which we kind of anticipated would be very difficult. Uh, for example, keeping the human tissue alive when we have to transport it from an operating room where it was just removed from a patient's brain and bringing it into the institute, into the laboratory space where we do our recordings is a lot more challenging and a logistical challenge. What Jonathan is doing is he is starting to ask the question as to where could we move next? Um, and so he's recording from some more challenging neurons in different layers of the cortex. Um, and he's basically going to be able to collect a data set in research science that we'll be able to use in structured science to evaluate, is this something that we can approach at scale? Um, or is this something to do kind of in parallel as we're recording in the pipeline? As the group grows, I think one of the main ways that we're going to move is basically recording from more than just a single neuron. And in my group, we've been able to assemble electrophysiologists that are very, very good at recording from these neurons, going in and getting a, getting a, a solid recording. And so as we go to a recording from two, three, four neurons, um, I'm very excited to take these technicians that have really honed their skills because they're doing this eight hours a day, five days a week, take those technicians and let them loose on recording from a second, a third, a fourth neuron in that slice. The single patch recordings are primarily focused on understanding 
the electrical signaling that takes place within a neuron. However, that's only one component of how um, neurons communicate. There's the other major component is chemical transmission, and that occurs between neurons. And so we try to record from as many as possible to tip the scales in our favor, because we don't know which neurons we patch or record from are gonna be connected. So the more we record from, the better chance we're gonna find a connection that we can then probe. We can then ask, well, what transformation are you performing between this input and output? It's, it's different than anything that's happening anywhere else in science, I feel like. The way that we can collaborate between the research science team and the, and the structured science team, and we can take advantage of these experts to be able to link all of these data together, um, I think it's just it's powerful and it just feels good. No individual person, no individual scientist that we have really uh, can understand every aspect of this very complex system that we're building of the complex types of experiments we do. But collectively, each person has something very valuable to bring and come up with what we believe is the best strategy moving forward, how to tackle these uh, big problems in neuroscience. Well, this has been a great transition to this environment for me from a traditionally academic environment where, you know, I spend a large amount of time in a room with no windows in the middle of a building by myself. Although I learned a lot at that experience, um, this place here is just much more vibrant, much more active. Things move more quickly. Here, because you're part of a team, it's much easier, it's in fact possible where it was not possible to push things forward.